Hi, this is Mashnu and here is video number three of this series of tactical exercises. Now this time I've chosen for a few positions where the opponent's king has been weakened, a weakened uh, castle position. As you see here in this first example, we see that the king is standing on g7. Normally the king would be on g8 with the bishop on g7 defending the dark squares but it's different this time um, well first of all if you would like to have a look for yourself at this position it's wide to move and try to find a way to win here I'm going to explain you what's happening um, there are actually two two patterns that we can recognize here well one of them of course this h file where we are attacking with a rook and it would be great to be able to bring the queen to h6 right just imagine this queen being on, on e3 we would have queen h6 check and then checkmate on h7 so that's one of the things that we can that can help us to, uh, to search for a solution how we, how can we bring our queen to, uh, to h6 now this bishop is covering the h4 square so a possible thought would be to block this bishop by playing for example rook to f6 a sacrifice of the exchange and then go with the queen to the h file that's one option another option is to try to look for forcing moves like in this case this sacrifice rook takes h7 so that means that we have here two possibilities of starting an attack against the black king um, what we should do then is of course to start calculating and the easiest way is to start calculating the most forcing variation now giving a check is of course more forcing than playing a rook to f6 so let's have a look at that one rook takes f6 check now, if the rook is taken, there are two options, to take the rook or to go to, to g8. If the rook is taken, then there is, again, two options of continuing the attack. Queen to h5 check, now this pawn on g6 is pinned. Another option is to remove the defender of this pawn by playing rook takes f7. Let's have a look at this one. We give a check on h8 the king goes back to g7 and here we don't see any way of continuing the attack it's even worse now the h file can can be used by black so our attack will have backfired completely so this is not a very good idea give this check there now let's have a look at rook takes f7 if rook takes f7 now we have queen takes g6 and now things start looking very promising because the king must go to h8 and now we can take the rook on f7 threatening checkmate on h7 and it's in fact not possible to um, to prevent this mate the only way would be to bring this knight either to f8 or to g5 and in both in both cases the move e6 comes attacking the queen and giving check with the bishop so this is completely over here if black advances d4 to block the check then we simply take the queen now let's return to the position where we left um, here after the first move rook takes h7 so we see that taking here on h7 leads to rook takes f7 followed by queen takes g6 and well to be complete let's have a look at rook takes f7 if this sacrifice is not taken then we simply give checkmate in two moves all right so this this second rook sacrifice must be taken so we see that um, after taking on h7 by black we have a forced win of course before we execute such move we need to calculate what happens if the king goes to uh, g8 
Well, in that case, there are again different options of continuing the attack. Perhaps the most clear one is following the same idea of rook takes f7. Because if here, here we, are, we are threatening to take on, on g6 followed by checkmate. So rook takes f7 and then again the same check here. And if the king goes to f8, there is rook, uh, sorry, queen takes f7 checkmate. And if something is placed in between here, like for example, rook to g7, there is rook takes g7, knight takes g7, and here we go again with this beautiful move e6, attacking the queen and threatening checkmate on g7. These are variations that are not very difficult to calculate. And because all the moves are forced, of course you need a good visualization skill. You need to be able to visualize the moves in your head, since in a tournament game you're not allowed to touch the pieces, of course. Uh, in a blitz game, let's say this was a blitz game, then, mm, well, we don't have the time to calculate all the variations. So then it comes to intuition. And I'm sure that many players in this position, who in a blitz game, would see a rook takes h7, king takes h7, and then rook takes f7 without calculating the rest of the variation, would simply go for it. And, well, it's interesting that I had a, a discussion a few days ago with a friend who was playing a tournament, and he, he won his game in a very tactical way, with a sacrifice and, and a beautiful attack. But after the game we analyzed and we saw that this, this combination that he tried was actually not correct. There was a defense, a possible defense, that his opponent didn't see. So then the discussion was about, okay, what do we do then? If, we, if there is a variation and you are not completely sure if it's winning or not, do you go into, into that or don't you? And I think that's the difference in playing style between players. Personally, I like very much to be sure about what I'm doing. So I like to calculate, to really be sure that when I sacrifice a piece, it's not going to be um, a mistake and I'm going to get enough compensation for this sacrificed piece. But there are some other players who um, who simply think, okay, it feels good, it, it looks good, there must be a way to win this, and uh, just, well, gamble. Sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. Now, let's have a short look at rook to f6. Well, we know already that rook takes h7 wins, but just to have a look at this other idea of attack, to block this diagonal to be able to go with the queen to h4. Now, if bishop takes f6, e takes f6, check, the king must go to h8 or g8. Now, since we are going to attack on the h-file, g8 looks safer. And then queen to h4. Now, here we threaten, of course, checkmate on h7, so h7, h5 must be played. And now we have a position where we really need to have a good look. How can we continue this attack? It's not very easy to find a way, and it's not a force in variation. I think that white has enough attacking possibilities after a queen to g3. So the idea is to sacrifice on g6. So bishop takes g6, f takes g6, queen takes g6, and followed by rook takes h5, of course, that's the threat. But um, actually, I, I would say if we see this type of things in a position that we, where we haven't seen any other forcing variation, then we, we could have a serious look at this. But if it's not necessary, if we have seen rook takes h7 winning, why should we take the risk of this rook to f6? But it's anyway, I found it interesting to show you this other idea of attacking, blocking this diagonal to go to the h file with the queen. All right, we'll move on to the next example now. There we are. It's um, again this this these pawns that have been advancing of black have weakened his king position. Now, my question to you is try to find a way to win for white. 
it's wide to move here okay now I'm going to continue my explanation we see that the Queen is attacked on h4 moving the Queen would mean that we would move the Queen far away from the attack because there are no good places to, to, to place the Queen so we would have to play Queen to b4, Queen to c4, something ugly like that so what we do in this case we start um, looking for options like bishop takes f6 since if the queen is taken this bishop on g7 will be pinned so let's calculate bishop takes f6 if here it's taken we have a rook takes g7 check now perhaps you would like to calculate what happens after king to f8 let's try it without moving the moves moving the um, the pieces king to f8 then we have a mating pattern if the rook can reach h8 right so king to f8 rook h7 and then how does black prevent rook to h8 checkmate there is actually no way if the king goes to h8 then rook to g4 is checkmate the bishop is checking and h7 is covered by the other bishop so here this leads to a win for white rook to h8 will be played so let's return to this position that means that here we don't need to be afraid of black taking the queen if we play bishop takes f6 but what are the other options if bishop takes f6 and he takes on f6 bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 well then h6 is vulnerable so queen takes h6 is probably enough to win the game ripping open this defense of the king let's have a look bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 and then queen takes h6 the bishop is attacked so it should move and then rook takes g5 queen takes g5 is also possible by the way and the only way to defend g7 now is to advance the f pawn so for example f6 but then the attack continues queen to h7 check the king to f8 and now let's see we have bishop to f5 attacking the queen perhaps later bringing the, the bishop to e6 this looks really very promising um, we could say that here uh, we have already a winning position this is even if we cannot calculate this until a checkmate we can still already see that this must be winning for white the queen is under attack the queen must move we can play bishop to e6 now and g8 is going to be a vulnerable square for for black if the queen moves and the queen to g8 is, is terrible let's return again because this is where we started I hope that you see that the pattern is in fact removing actually taking on f6 so if black takes then the defense of h6 is gone and to do this we must first calculate the variation of bishop takes f6 g takes queen rook takes g7 king f8 rook h7 and then checkmate on h8 that's a line that we really need to calculate there is no way of playing this bishop takes f6 without calculating that line because if we sacrifice a queen we really should be sure that is good okay let's continue with the next example now okay this is one that I actually would invite everyone everyone to um, to calculate here so no exception whether you are an, an advanced player or a beginner or, or a club player or you have never played in a chess club anyway take your time 
have a good look at this position. It's white to move again and uh, calculate. All right. I'm going to show you the solution now. This is a very, um, well, let's say, well-known pattern of checkmate. Um, it's about this weakened squares there. If this bishop would be on h7, would be checkmate. Also, if the queen would be on h7, it would be checkmate. So the first move is really not that difficult to find. The queen takes h5. And if the queen is taken, then the bishop can go to h7 with checkmate. If the queen is not taken, we can choose to give checkmate on h7, or if the, the knight is taken, then to give checkmate on h8. So this is a very, let's say, um, quite simple combination, a checkmate in two moves. Okay, we're going to move on now to this last example of this video. A bit more complicated this time. So it's white to move. You can pause the video if you want to have a look for yourself here. Of course, we see a weakened castle position. The pawn on g6 is uh, is not longer there. That means that automatically h7 and f7 become weaknesses. So when we see this, we must think, OK, how can we attack h7 and f7? A move like queen to h5, for example, is interesting to look at. Queen to h5, attacking h7, attacking f7 with several pieces. But as I told you before, when we get to this kind of positions, the first thing that we must do is see if we can find a forcing variation. Queen to h5 is not forcing because black has knight to g6 defending f7 with the queen blocking this attack against both um, weaknesses so it's not really a forcing line if we want to look for a forcing line, we need to look at, well in this example there are actually two forcing moves. One of them is knight to f6, forking king and queen. Another is bishop takes h7. Check. Now a check is always more forcing than anything else, so let's have a look at bishop takes h7. If the sacrifice is taken, we have brought the opponent's king into a more vulnerable space, more open space. So now queen to h5 looks like a good idea. The king must go back to g8. And how do we continue here? Well, we can take on f7, of course. Looks like the most easy way to continue. Then if the king goes to h7, then we have knight f6 check, winning the queen, at least, or perhaps even checkmating. Yes, it is a checkmate actually, because king to h8 is forced, and then queen h5 check followed by checkmate. Yeah, queen h5, bishop h6, queen takes h6 is checkmate. And if here the king goes to h8, so then this bishop is not longer pinned, so we don't have this knight to f6. Well, what can we do? Still, perhaps knight to f6 is interesting. Knight f6, threatening queen to h5. What if the knight is taken? Well, then bishop takes f6. So this looks winning again. Let's see, knight f6, we threaten queen to h5. Well, he could try knight to g8 as a defense. Mm, but no, then still we give this check and then we take on, on h6. Well, let's see, perhaps it doesn't lead to checkmate, but in any way we win back the sacrificed piece and the opponent's king is completely open, so 
knight f6, bishop takes, mm, he could take on f6 or on h6, if he takes here, then rook takes, so this is a winning position, we don't need to calculate this any further, this is simply winning. Um, the, the opponent's pieces are not active. We have three attacking pieces. A fourth is going to uh, join the attack soon, so there must be a, a fourth mate here somewhere. We don't need to, to have a longer look at this. Okay, so let's go back, because we started here, and the advice that I gave you is to look for forcing moves, and um, there were two forcing moves. Bishop takes h7. We see that this leads to a win for white. And we can also have a look at this other forcing move. Knight takes f6. Check. Well, this knight must be taken because otherwise we take the queen. So bishop takes f6 is forced. Now here we could do different things. We can take here but then it's not forcing anymore because knight to, to g6 comes. Perhaps we can sacrifice on h7 again. Let's see. Bishop takes f7 check. King takes h7. Queen h5 check. The king goes to g8 and then we take on f6. And it's winning. And this is winning. Let's see. Knight Is knight g6 a solution? Knight g6 covering h8. Now we simply then go for g7 of course. So queen to h6 followed by queen to g7 check knight. So it looks as if we have here two possible solutions. Bishop takes a 7 and knight takes a 6. Let's have again a look at knight takes a 6. It must be taken. Now here we just looked at this sacrifice. We also have of course queen to h5 check. I'm sorry not, not check but threatening to take on h7 it's less forcing, right? It's less forcing. Mm, knight to g6, take on f6, mm. and also perhaps does he have bishop? To, uh, let's see. I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm looking at queen to h5, bishop takes g5. But here we have checkmate into queen takes h7, king f8. Queen to h8 is checkmate, so that's not a solution. So that means that here, to prevent this, he must play knight to g6, and then bishop takes f6 is possible. But I don't like this defender here on on on, uh, on g6. So if if this would be a, a tournament game, I would simply calculate very well what happens after bishop takes h7 and then execute it. If you don't find any defense for black then simply go for it. Enough pieces in the attack to uh, to win the game. Alright, um, last thing that I want to tell you is that I did make a series of videos um, that have similarity, a similarity to this example. It's the series called How to Attack and um, I I'm, I'm don't remember exactly how many videos those are, I, I believe about 8 or 9 videos with examples from a book, a very good book on, uh, on attacking chess uh, called The Art of Attack in Chess by Vukovic so if you are interested in watching that series of videos of attack then you see that Attacking is not something that just uh, is done out of out of the blue. It's always based on weaknesses on the opponent's position. It's always based on positional ideas, squares that are weakened, and uh, activation of pieces, and all these patterns that we have been looking at in this series now. All right, I'll stop now. I'll say goodbye, and uh, I'll see you next time on YouTube. Goodbye.